I met this girl when I was 10 years old and what I loved most, she had so much so. Hey everybody, it's Old School Heart back with another cultural conversation. Now it's been a while since we had a cultural conversation so I'm so excited uh, to be speaking with you guys because I want to gain some perspective and I actually really really want your opinions on this specific topic because it's something that I'm currently uh, trying to process right now. And so do me a favor, if this is your first time watching the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more cultural conversations. Of course, we do have our uh, Where My Girls At videos that appear late Wednesday, early Thursday morning that are uploaded. Please like, comment, and share. Today we are talking about Patrice Colors, Patrice Colors and the Black Lives Matter Foundation and some new developments that have come um, from that organization, some things that have come up front uh, and the criticisms that uh, she's received. And so, yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, this is our cultural discussion on Black Lives Matter and Patrice Color. Okay, before we have our cultural discussion on uh, Black Lives Matter and Patrice Colors, I did want to update you with some information. So uh, this past Wednesday, you know, I did the Where My Girls at Episode 7 on Keisha Jacobs. Uh, her mother uh, annually holds a rally uh, every year for all the missing black kids, right? So um, she sent out a message to the Facebook group saying that she's going to postpone that until May 1st. And so if you looked at episode seven, uh, you will see that uh, the flyer was posted. So just know that the event, if you live in the Richmond, Virginia area, that event has changed and they will have that event May 1st. Uh, further details, you can go to the Facebook page that I listed on episode seven for more information, but I did wanna make sure that information was updated for everyone. So um, if you're not familiar with what's going on with Black Lives Matter and one of the co-founders, Patrice Colors, I am going to update you first and then we will have our cultural discussion and then you can provide your opinions and different things like that. So on April 10th of this month, uh, the New York Post, um, wrote an article about um, Patrice Cullors, who is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Global Network, because there's a couple of Black Lives Matters organizations, but she's a part of one of the biggest ones, and we'll discuss why she's the biggest organization. But they did an article about uh, her um, real estate buying binge. Um, they did this article on uh, April 10, 2001, like I stated. So what I wanna do is read an excerpt from that news article, and then um, we'll also look at her response to uh, said article. So let me read a little bit of that for you guys and post that so that you're able to see it. The New York Post article reads, as protests broke out across the country in the names of Black Lives Matter, the group's co-founder went on a real estate buying binge, snagging four high-end homes for 3.2 million in the U.S. alone, according to property records. Patrice Khan Colors, 37, also eyed property in the Bahamas at an ultra exclusive resort where Justin Timberlake and Tiger Woods both have homes. The Post has learned. Uh, luxury apartments and townhouses at the beachfront Albany Resort outside of Nassau are priced between 5 million and 20 million, according to a local agent. The self-described Marxist last month purchased a $1.4 million home on a secluded road, a short drive from Malibu in Los Angeles, according to a report also. The rest of the New York Post article will be posted in my description box. So click the link for the rest of the article and we will continue on with the cultural conversation. 
So after that article was posted, of course, uh, it was met with a lot of criticism, uh, especially people who had already had some suspicion about the organization and about the way that it was being ran. Uh, now, we actually talked a couple of weeks ago about um, Tamir Rice's Samira or Samira, I don't know how to say her name, but I think it's Samira uh, Rice. We talked about her criticism of Black Lives Matter, Tamika Mallory, uh, Sean King. We talked about how um, she, you know, just was criticizing the way that they're going about doing activism. And so, of course, when this uh, article came out, uh, it added fuel to an already um, big fire. It already, it, it really did. Uh, not only that, you have uh, Mike Brown's, Mike Brown Sr., Mike Brown's uh, father, who has came out and is demanding uh, millions of dollars from Black Lives Matter because, of course, uh, the organization was really uh, started from his son's death. Um, a lot of the reason why we know about Black Lives Matter is simply because of all of the work that was going on surrounding his death, the protests, the riots, and different things like that. And so, of course, people are gravitating towards this story because, um, because of uh, those parents and because um, anytime that you have uh, someone uh, in a position speaking for black people, working to what we would say, um, push uh, forward some of the demands of black people is going to be met with criticism, is going to be met with um, trying to, uh, I would say, assess what's going on with the organization, if they're really doing what they're saying that they're doing. So um, this week, uh, because of all of the criticism, because of uh, certain things that was happening, of course, Patrice Cullors finally had to respond. And so the way that she responded was uh, by appearing on BNC, which I've never heard of this on YouTube, but I, I'm guessing it's a new black news network for melanated people, for black people. Um, it's a new network. Uh, and Mark Lamont Hill actually works for uh, this network and he interviewed Patrice Colors. Now I want to uh, read a little bit of the excerpt from that interview uh, so that you will have a perspective on, you know, what she was saying. And so I'm going to read some of the things that she said. Uh, one of the things that she said is I have never taken a salary from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. That's what she said. Uh, she said, that's important. She told uh, the host, um, Mark Lamont Hill, that's important to know because what the right wing media is trying to say is that the donations that people gave to Black Lives Matter went towards my spending. And that is categorically untrue and incredibly dangerous. Um, now, also, um, we also know that a couple of months ago, we found out that Black Lives Global Network received over $90 million in donations. As the interview went on further, Patrice Cullors blames uh, the right wing um, as well as white hate groups and terrorist groups that are not in favor of Black Lives Matter and her position in Black Lives Matter. Uh, she said that she has basically been targeted. Uh, also, um, this was unfair because she is a black woman um, that is, you know, just trying to support her family. That was one of the things that um, caught my attention during the interview was, um, uh, she talked about, you know, owning these uh, several homes and uh, the reason for owning these several homes is to take care of her family. Uh, she talked about being able to take care of her mom. Uh, she does have a child as well as a disabled brother. And so she said that a lot of the purchasing of these homes was so that family life would be sustained and better. 
um, or, or for the better uh, was one of the things that she brought up in um, the interview that she had with Mark Lamont Hill. Now, Mark Lamont Hill did not get very, very deep um, uh, while interviewing her. And what I mean by that is that he did not press too much. I'm getting the feeling that during this interview, Mark was basically trying to be the savior here to ask specific questions to put her in a better light. Now, was he able to do that? I don't think he was because of the way that Patrice Colors was answering um, the questions that he was specifically asking. Uh, um, one of those questions was um, really actually probably one of the best questions that Mark L L Lamont Hill asked was, uh, he talked about how he had wrote a book and how he uh, really had to uh, consciously decide if uh, writing a book based on some of our plights that didn't specifically happen to him, but happened to, you know, people that he knew about or things that happened on a grander scale. He had to really contemplate um, how he would make money off the backs of um, people who went through whatever particular issue that he talked about in this book. And so he asked her, you know, how do you reconcile the fact that the majority of the money that you make is off the backs of these men and women who have died? You know, these people have families and different things like that. And the only thing that Patrice could say during this moment, which was quite alarming to me was, well, you know, I've been organizing since I was 16. Now in a different article, she said she was organized since she was 12, but she said 16 in this moment, but she was saying, I've been organizing since I was 16 and I've been directly affected because, um, uh, my brother was beating, beaten by LA PD, or I believe she said LAPD, uh, because my brother was directly beaten by LAPD. And so I, you know, can talk about this basically because, um, I sort of went through this now to me, that's not the same as, uh, Samira Rice or a Mike Brown or a Kiana, uh, uh I'm sorry, Brianna Taylor. These are people who literally lost family and because of that there has been world outrage so it's a little bit different Patrice but um that was one of the questions that I thought I, overall uh Mark uh did a good job with other than that the other questions that were asked were ways in order to justify her reasoning for having four homes right you know so she talked about you know being able to support her family and as a black woman you know how important that is and that no one you know that is sexist to even think that she you know uh, that she couldn't you know support her family from the things that she did and only you know certain people look at that as bad you know um and it's massage noir noir i always say that word wrong and, you know, she talked about that. Uh, she did specify in the interview that she did think that um, people who are community organizers should be paid for the work that they do. She did say that she was for that, but she did also say that she did not collect any from f funds from Black Lives Matter Global Network. Now, there is a for-profit for part of Black, uh, Black Lives matters global network and there is a non for profit part so we don't know if she's just talking about not receiving funds from one part but receiving from others now we do know that the organization received 90 million dollars last year and they disclosed this information about eight months ago that they received over 90 million dollars now a lot of people have been saying allegedly that Warren Buffett um, is highly funding the Black Lives Matter organization. 
highly funded by him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I would want to know where this 90 million is coming from. Um, and a lot of people are suspicious about that. They really want to know where is this coming from? Not only that, um, Mark Lamont Hill didn't ask if she receives a salary. Uh, during the whole conversation, he just kept saying, but you're receiving funds from other places, right? And she said, well, yeah, I am because, you know, I have um, a book that was a bestseller. Um, uh, she does, she has con contractual um, contracts. Uh, she has contracts with uh, YouTube and I believe another one where she does some, um, some teaching and retooling to a prison or different thing like that about uh, black treatment and um, uh, all of that type of stuff. And then um, Warner Brothers, I believe, gave her um, a deal for um, uh, network education and different things like that. So I guess in the near future, we will be seeing some um, movies, videos, television, documentaries on um, Black Lives Matter, um, educational pieces and different things like that. So I guess she receives money from that. But um, he did not say specifically, really, really ask her, you know, any entity of Black Lives Matter's global network, do you receive a salary from? I believe if he would have asked her that, then she, I don't know if she could have danced around that like she did the other questions in the interview. So basically, you know, uh, she just talked about how hard it was now that the New York Post wrote that uh, piece on her and how, the, you know, she felt being targeted. And because, you know, she did write the piece um, she started to cry and she said that she has to have security officers now. People are coming to her homes, trying to find out what's in her home. Um, and it's been very, very scary for her. Uh, she also talked about the role of a community organizer, basically saying that a community organizer pushes power. And that's what Black Lives Matter does is um, it's supposed to push power or bring attention to things that need to be changed, fixed um, in the community. Um, one of the things that I thought was very, very suspicious was she said that Black Lives Matter Global Network is not a charity. Uh, we are a power building body. So she used that word power again. And so uh, that left a lot of for me, I think what should have happened in that moment is Mark Lamont Hill should have pushed. Okay, so if you are a power building body um, and you're not a charity, number one, why do you receive donations? And number two, if it's a power building body, what legislation or what have you pushed forward thus far? Um, I think that that would have been some great questions to ask. Uh, other things in that interview was she just stated that um, she had been giving money to a number of organizations that she felt needed the money, um, giving money to uh, different uh, families. Uh, she used $21 million of the $91 million to uh, give to certain families um, that were in need. Uh, she, you know, she stated that. Um, one of the things that she said also that uh, seemed quite suspicious to me is um, in regards to Mike Brown, in regards to Samir Rice, she said that um, they're not the only black organization, right? She stated that they're not the only black organization that if people, you know, need some other plate, you know, some some funding there are other places they can get grants there are other places to get money and that the black lives matter organization is not the government so they should you know people should be still fighting for reparations they still should be fighting for legislation in the area that they're in they should be pushing local government that um black lives matter shouldn't be the organization that they look to to receive everything so uh, that was the gist of the um, 
that was the gist of the interview of course i'm going to give you some of my thoughts here um and i will not be long but i did want to share with you guys some things that i thought about uh while listening to miss miss patrice colors uh give her explanation uh for her four homes so one of the first things that i found interesting about the interview with mark lamont hill and patrice colors was um this pity party that i guess she wanted us to have because she is a black woman that is being scrutinized now we talked about this with uh tamika mallory i don't know why for the life of me uh these people who position themselves as community organizers for black people or they take these black political um uh black political positions those people feel as if they cannot be critiqued or criticized or have any type of constructive criticism from anyone i don't know why it's a surprise for them i don't know why they play dumb uh when they are looked at when they are assessed it's going to happen because like I stated in the Samira Rice video, um, anytime that we've had a movement, anytime that we've had um, something as black people that we were trying to push forward, um, we have had snakes in the grass, right? We've had people to deceive us. We've had people that have taken cuts from the government and undermined us. Um, we've had those people before. And so we are very, very uh, not trusting uh, people who say that they have our back. And not only are we not trusting, uh, we are very, very suspicious of what they are doing because we've been hit bad before. So I don't understand why Patrice didn't know that number one, by disclosing the fact that you received $90 million and then someone finding out that you have not only $1 million home, but you have four. And then there's suspicion of you going to look at another huge home next to Tiger Woods and some other people, you will be looked at without any question because we've been screwed before. So we wanna make sure that we're not going to be screwed anymore. So, you know, she tries to put this pity party because she's a black woman and a black mother and she's just trying to take care of her family. And that's a red flag for me. When the work that you're doing is about families and about people who have lost loved ones and they're trying to process that and get justice and you come out and say but i gotta take care of my family but you're taking care of your family off of the deaths of somebody else's family member and one thing that you know me and my dad was talking about this today one thing that my dad said was you are working for people who don't have anything and it says a lot when your profit is more than the community that you supposedly work for. It says a lot about you and the work that you say that you're doing. When you end up having more than the people that you're supposed to be out here working for, that says a lot about your integrity. That says a lot about who you are because what are you in it for? And so when she said that and she was like, you know, I'm just trying to take care of my family. Those are to gain sympathy points. Those are um, narratives that have been used by black feminists quite a bit. You know, I have to take care of my family. I have to do what I need to do, blah, 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 blah. That's black fem feminist bull crap. That's black feminist bull, bull crap. And she was using that uh, as a way to gain sympathy points. And I think that's a no. I think that uh, unfortunately, if you really wanted to maintain a certain lifestyle for your family, I think you should have done that separate from, um, separate from the organization and separate from using any names uh, of uh, slain people. Uh, I believe that's for the family to do. If they were gonna wanna do that, they should do that. Another thing that she said in that video that um, really got to me is that these organizations, they, I mean, if, if you wanted some money or if you wanted anything, 
um, that there are other organizations that you can go to. This is not the only black organization. Well, dear ma'am, why wouldn't people come to Black Lives Matter uh, in specific cases where it has to do with the killings of black people um, by white racist people? Why wouldn't they come to you? Uh, and she was saying that in regards to like Mike Brown and stuff like that. There, there are or other organizations that can give to you. Yeah, but this organization in particular got a lot of their money from uh, certain people who died. Um, and so if the family asks you to support whatever they're doing, that should be the number one thing that you do is support that family. So if Mike Brown asks for $20 million so that he can start his organization in St. Louis and Ferguson, you need to be giving him that because the only reason why you received that money is because his son died and you started a slogan that, uh, that, uh, catapulted into an organization, but you use her son's name across the country in order to talk about, uh, black killings in order to, um, your organization to blow up the way that it did, you used his son's name. And so, no, they're going to come to you first. And not only that, why can't we come to you? Why can we not? You are one of the biggest black organizations in the United States. And we know that there are um, money. We know that there is money that needs to be allocated to certain parts of the country that are dealing with the things that you say that you are fighting for. You said that you are a power building organization, a power building body. So if there needs to be power in certain areas, then you need to provide the funding for that. Dear ma'am, you know, uh, so it was a sympathy for me. Um, and it was also this idea that she wanted to push people off into other organizations. Well, they have money too. We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about you and that $90 million and what you are doing with it and where you are getting your funds. Um, another thing that, sh that she said that I really wanted to discuss, and this is an honest question. And I even said that, um, in regards to, um, the Tamika Mallory versus Samira Rice thing. The one thing that I am torn on is how community organizers should receive their money. Um, and you can sound off here. Uh, do you believe that community organizers should receive money? And then how do you think that they should receive it? Um, I know uh, me personally, that's something that I'm dealing with right now. I want to start an organization um, and I want to devote to it full time, but I am having issues on how I'm going to maintain my modest lifestyle. I'm not rich. My little modest lifestyle if I do this organization full time. Um, I've been thinking about that and please help me if you know a, a good way for me to do that. But, um, Patrice, when she said that community organizers need to be compensated, I sort of, you know, kind of agree. And then I kind of feel like, but it's off of the tragedy of others. It's off of the tragedy of other people's families. And how do I provide for those families? If I'm not specifically talking about mine, um, and I think Patrice was very arrogant when she, you know, kind of brushed through that question that Mark Lamont Hill had and was like, you know, well, my brother was, you know, um, uh, I fought for him when I was 16. That's not what the, that Mark was asking. He was asking, how do you navigate speaking as if this stuff happened to you and be compensated for it? It did happen to you. And these families are still alive and they're watching you. And, um, that's the one thing that she did not answer correctly at all. Um, another thing is integrity wise, I think Patrice, uh, played really, really dumb with us because we all know that whenever there's a killing, 
George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, whenever there's a killing, we know that they're calling Patrice and the other co-founders of Black Lives Matter to be the talking point for the movement and to be the talk, talking point um, when discussing these killings. They receive money when they're interviewed. They receive money when they're asked to come to certain places. They receive some type of stipend. And even the families, when they're, you know, called to these interviews to discuss their slain family member and how they felt and everything like that, they're not getting paid. But Patrice is getting paid for that. And so it is a smack in the face to see someone have not one home, but four. Because a lot of her job is to be the talking point um, anytime these people die. Or she's a talking point for the left a lot of times. She's a, she's a talking point for that. Uh, they said that, you know, she's even doing seminars and having conversations with um, creators on YouTube and trying to get them to, you know, understand different aspects of Black Lives Matter and what it means and how to navigate that through their channels and different things like that. So you are you are profiting off of these families, um, dead loved ones. You've been doing that since 2016. Uh, so that is a problem. Um, what else did she say throughout that interview? So I do really want your opinion on that. I think that's it. Um, just really arrogant, of, almost arrogant. And not only that, uh, Black Lives Matter as an organization, if anyone could tell me what really this organization stands for not only what it stands for but what are they doing what she says it's a power building body does that mean that there's going to be some legislate legislation work coming um are you going to be supporting reparations with yvette and tone what are y'all going to be doing because you got 90 million dollars and i just want to know how are you going to allocate that? How, what, what are the steps? And, and she didn't even give us that information. She's like, we're a new organization. We're going to make mistakes. Ma'am, if you're going to come on the interview, be prepared, be prepared. This $90 million, we have a set, blah, 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 blah. She didn't even say all of that. So it was, y'all, it was a lot. Not to mention, I did want to say this, you know, I think, when Black Lives Matter was formed, uh, it would have done them good to have a board of directors that don't know them from Adam. Uh, black people, um, doctors, a doctor from Seattle, a lawyer from Chicago, people that don't know these people at all. And so that they can assess these funds and everything can be distributed, distributed wisely, even a salary for her. Um, and that information could be disclosed to the public because right now they're not disclosing what they've done with that $90 million or where it's going to. And that's another big problem. Patrice is tight lipped. And so is that organization about how those funds are allocated, how much they have left. And that's a huge problem. And so, um, y'all just, just give me your thoughts about, you know, what you felt about the interview. I will post it below so that you can look at it. Uh, give me your thoughts about Black Lives Matter. Do you think it's been an effective organization or do you think that there needs to be a lot more work done? Um, let me know your thoughts. Sound off below and give me some opinions on, you know, how I can run an organization and still maintain my lifestyle and still do that full time. Do you think it's right? Do you think it's wrong? This is Old School Heart. Of course, I will see you Wednesday for another episode of Where My Girl's At. You guys have a great night. Love you. Bye-bye.